Ah, Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Always like that. that you have great. to turn it off and on again, right? You know, uh, for people who know the yes, yes, but I'm here. The TV show, the IT crowd. Martin, uh, we lost uh, two two minutes. Let's uh, not lose not more. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I will ask you to share your screen, and so you can tell us a little bit. Uh, right to point of view as an incumbent bank, but successful models and failures. Perfect. The stage is yours for 25 minutes. Thank you. Okay. So sorry for the uh, quick delay, but you know technology. Uh, and you, you know after after seeing some of the presentations today, uh, I wasn't sure that you know uh, a point of view from bank is 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 wanted or, or needed. Uh, you know we we heard the quote uh, from Bill Gates many times. So I don't know what my job is going to be next year if if the banks are still around. No, but uh, really. Uh, I, I always enjoy to be part of uh, this event. Uh, it's for the third time. And uh, I always uh, try to put, uh, let's say, I, I, I like to be um, really specific about what, what I'm showing and showing specific use cases. Because as you will see, uh, I'm representing here uh, incumbent bank. I'm representing here uh, uh, the biggest bank in the Czech Republic, which is part of a of, of financial group across the Central and Eastern Europe. And this, this banks and this banking group is over 200 years old. And our business model is built on uh, personal, personal advisory to clients uh, and uh, through digital and personal channels. And we really, uh, we really build a personal relationship with our clients. And now we are hearing that, uh, you know, the relationship with cli between client and bank uh, is going to be lost and it's going to be replaced by third party app or super app or whatever app. And uh, we are not blind and we are not deaf. And uh, we, uh, even despite our business model is built on the, on the relationship and personal advisory, we are thinking about what should we do and how, how should we behave. And uh, we, we reflect on that open banking is something we should put our, our attention to. So despite the fact uh, that uh, we are incumbent, we are old bank, uh, we, we are big corporation, uh, we decided that we will follow the opportunities in the in the open banking, and I usually like to show you know where we are standing. But this is this uh, this uh, let's say uh, comparison with with other banks. This is not uh, a contest, or at least from my point of view, all the banks and all the subjects who are uh, on this slide uh, respect let's say kudos or uh, uh, or respect the credit for pioneering and uh, building some value in the open banking environment because especially from a bank it's not an easy uh, discipline why to open up to somebody else who is saying yeah i'm gonna build some added value for the clients but you as a bank who is opening up you will probably lose some of your relationship so for for bank it's especially especially difficult so uh, really uh, big credit to all the banks who who uh, are trying and who are uh, who are providing the open API and open banking services. And you know, uh, before I jump into the specific use cases where we are active in the open banking, I I'd like to share a little bit of, let's say, theoretical point of view or, or, or philosophical point of view, because I'm asking myself pretty often, like, why we as a bank should should be active in the open banking. And uh, you know, my my answer is we hear a lot about digital transformation about disruption about uh, losing relationship with client and many of these buzzwords i don't like buzzwords so much but uh, you know especially the digital transformation and disruption is something we should uh, reflect and we should react to but what does it mean what is behind these buzzwords uh, so from my point of view and this this uh, theoretical uh, talk will lead me to a specific use cases. From my point of view, the disruption and the transformation in the banking is, let's say, disrupting and transforming how the value is generated and how the value is measured by bank itself and by clients. If I start from the bank point of view, so we are not only focusing on the PNL anymore. We are looking on many other uh, metrics. And we are looking on customer satisfaction. We are looking on uh, customer interaction. We are looking. Uh, we are looking for, for for these metrics. I think a few years ago, measuring interaction with your clients that was something like why we were only measuring PNL and that was it. You know, so this is this is what is transforming. And also from the 
from the client point of view. I think the money, how we see it, is totally different than it was years ago. We look at the money or just in the context of our needs and of our behavior. I think the, the, previous, uh, the previous presentation about the super app was uh, the demonstration of this, let's say, new psychology of money. We are only looking at the money as a commodity and we are thinking about our needs, not, not about the money. And basically, this leads me to, to how we are thinking about the open banking, because open banking basically means that we are creating, and now I'm in a bank, we are creating a benefits for some other subjects who are delivering the benefits uh, to, to others, to, to, the, to the end clients. And uh, the question is, so should we as a bank be happy that we provide APIs and somebody else is building uh, a solution on these APIs the solution is awesome and the clients love it but you know what is there for us so this is a big question and i think this is let's say the underlying philosophical question uh behind behind the open banking uh thinking in banks and maybe in the in the banking and financial industry as a whole but that, that's just you know to to see what what uh, what's in my mind uh, when, it, when it goes to a theory about open banking uh but let's jump into into the something specific you know uh as I said, I don't like buzzwords so much, but you know, I have three buzzwords uh, on, on, on these slides. But this is just to show you that uh, I will present one use case from the PSD2 area, one from the open banking, and one from the, let's say, ecosystem point of view. So sorry for, for these buzzwords and for, for these pictures. So let's start in the PSD2. You know, uh, when, we, when we were getting credit for the PSD2, we decided that, uh, one strong internal capability which i want to build in our bank is the api aggregation the psd2 or whatever apis are on the market available and have a data which are let's say beneficial for us or for the clients we want to have an internal capability to aggregate them uh, we decided not to buy this as a service from uh, soltech or figo or somebody else we decided to build this let's say platform uh, or technical platform and we decided that we will be plugging in a bank by bank where we see the benefits for us or for our clients. And I can see this as a strong internal capability. And we are using this capability for all the solutions we are building for our customers in the PSD2 area. And now I'm talking about us as a bank, as a third party. This is not about exposing our own APIs. This is about delivering a solution to our clients. And just to show you what we have built so far, uh, uh, using this, let's say, aggregation platform. So one uh, one example is from the uh, payment area. So we integrated or aggregated uh, all the Czech and a um, uh, few Slovakian uh, banks' uh, payment uh, initiation service APIs, and we build a solution uh, in for e-commerce payments on this and deliver it to the market. And then for the account information service, we we are using it for the digital onboarding. And we are using it for the for the let's say enrichment of the transaction history or uh, real time transaction uh, data or transaction history data analysis. And these use cases, how they are successful? Basically, in the payment, it's not successful at all. Uh, actually, we we stopped this solution a few months ago because uh, we could see that for client to use a PIS API of a bank for making a payment, in some cases, is a nightmare. We had like 5% conversion because there was obstacle, obstacle, another obstacle, obstacle. And basically the clients were not able to pay. You know, Now we are used to payment by Apple Pay, Google Pay. We are used to credit card or payment card. And basically it's it's pretty seamless. With credit card, it's like typing some numbers, etc. But with the PIS API, it was, a, it was a, you know, there were like 10 process steps, uh, five messages, etc. So we decided, well, Probably the quality of the APIs on the Czech and Slovakian market is not so good, and we basically have to put this product on hold. So that was uh, that was uh, we were not happy, but that's that's the reality. But in the other case, uh, we are pretty successful. So as I said, we are using the AIS uh, APIs of other banks for uh, digital onboarding. That means that we are using it for anti-money laundering purposes. And we are using it also for, uh, let's say, uh, pro uh, providing some proof of data. And today, 50% uh, of our all uh, digital loan sales are going through or are using uh, PSD2 data of other banks. And uh, we are pretty happy about, about this result. And in the 
in the third use case. So uh, we are providing, let's say, added value to the transaction data analysis, to the account information service data. And uh, we are building a know-how on the top of the data or added value. And then we are using it for, uh, for our subsidiaries or for some other uh, B2B clients to give them, let's say, some added value from the, from the data uh, which, which we are using uh, from, the, from the PSD2 APIs. So this is just the just the uh, overview of the of the, the three specific solutions uh, we built on the uh, on our API aggregation platform and how successful uh, they are in the in the reality. And what is what, what I wanted to mention uh, within the third use case, the real time uh, data analysis, is the business model because we are not uh, charging here API calls. We are charging here, let's say, or oh, this is a subscription uh, subscription uh, business model pricing pricing model. So not API calls, but but subscription. So let's move uh, out from the PSD2 area and let's dive a little bit to 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 the broader, uh, non not regulated by PSD2 areas. So something which uh, which we can call open banking, and this is where a really nice use case come in place. And this is a digital identity. So especially nowadays when many of you as I am sitting in our homes, you know, and uh, cannot basically go out or shouldn't go out from, from our homes, the digital economy and digital interaction is more and more important. And I think this is a habit which, uh, which is not going to uh, leave us uh, when uh, once the COVID is hopefully over, but this is gonna stay and the pe penetration of digital uh, economy and digital society will grow. And this is where the digital identity comes into place. Uh, if we want to interact in a digital environment, we need to have a digital identity to prove that, that it's me, that's ourselves. And uh, on the Czech market, there is, let's say, zero solution for this. Uh, the colleagues or colleagues, the uh, viewers and uh, the attendees uh, from, uh, from Norway or, or Sweden can say, wow, this is not uh, anything new. This is something we have in our countries uh, since 2000 something. You know, but for, for, for our country, this is a brand new uh, and uh, we are starting or we are going uh, full rollout uh, next year. And the banking identity, basically the credentials for your internet banking and the fact that you have an online account and digital banking with your bank will be proof of your digital identity for government and for uh, private, uh, private sectors. And you will be able to do majority of the operations from the point and time where, when you just want, you know, if you are traveling on a bus and want to do something, uh, you verify yourself, you can do it. You know, if you are sitting at home, uh, you need to go to uh, some government office, you can do it from, fr from home. And it's really uh, the, the biggest beauty of this solution is basically that you are using your internet banking or digital banking credentials. So that means that you don't have to install a new app. You don't have to register anywhere. You don't have to learn something new, new passport, no. And it's it's totally free for you as a as an end customer. So this is uh, this is something uh, where or this is something I'm really looking forward to. We already started with uh, let's say a, a pilot two years ago, uh, which uh, which was somehow limited to to few industries. Uh, but next year we are rolling this to the to the whole society, and I think that's going to be a huge let's say uh, huge uh, opportunity where the open banking and banks uh, can chip in uh, into the digitalization of the, of the whole society. So this is a nice, nice use case. Uh, as I said, everything I'm showing is uh, uh, live in production or coming into production uh, really soon. And, you know, uh, just to show you uh, what does it mean, you know, this few, few, few lines, what does it mean in the reality and how, how simple it's for the clients. It's just the basic uh, all out to the zero. You know? You are in the third party environment and you need to verify your identity because the law says it. You know, you have to verify it for some services or for some operations. So you click your bank, you are redirected to the bank, you know, and just provide the credentials, you provide a consent, and you are back at the third party uh, environment. All out to the zero, uh, open ID uh, standard, uh, pretty easy, but uh, the added value uh, is going to be, I believe, huge. Okay, so that was a use case from open banking. And uh, I decided to, to get uh, also one use case from the area I would call it, uh, ecosystem. And uh, if you remember how I introduced our bank, uh, it might be pretty, uh, pretty difficult for, for, for our bank to, to be active in building a 
or be active in building ecosystem around us with the subjects who where are some synergies with uh, with with our strategy and with our goals and this is exactly uh this is exactly what we were thinking but my my uh my thinking is if we really want to build be open and if we really want to uh foster the openness we should be able to build an ecosystem around the bank with subjects who can uh, together with us create the value and we were thinking okay so how the ecosystem should look like for a company which is 200 years old but uh, and uh, but which is on the other hand which is pretty rich in resources and knowledge which is pretty rich in money as well uh, and who what entrepreneurs what companies should, do we want to have uh, uh, around around us uh, what companies do we want to have in the ecosystem you know and this is where we decided okay uh, we want to create a corporate venture capital program where we will create an ecosystem of companies which uh, are fulfilling some of the let's say synergies effects with us and uh, are thinking in the same way about the values and uh, about uh, about the prosperity as we do so we we we, we designed and we launched uh, beginning of this year a seed starter which is a venture capital program and we are investing uh, we are already investing in the startups not only fintechs but uh, but startups in general where we can see a synergy with with, with, with our bank but the synergy is not you know the, the the main decision criteria what what we are doing is basically we are looking for startups who are thinking about the long game what is the long game you can you can read it on the slide but basically what what we are trying to express and what is our what is our value proposition to the market and to the startup is saying like we are not here to feed the short-term startup bubble where many subjects are getting funded and funded and funded and not generating any value and uh, the founders are just thinking you know wow we're going to be rich uh, and we were going to be successful so this is this is not the subjects we want to have in our ecosystems we are we are looking for the subjects who are really humble who are ha having a proper proper value and who are having a really good uh product uh, uh or solution problem fit you know this is this is crucial for us if the company if the startup can find a problem and find a proper solution uh for the problem so this is how we how we decided to to create the ecosystem uh, around uh, around our bank uh yeah and basically that was the third use case from the from the uh, ecosystem uh area or third, third use case uh, overall uh, and uh, you know i'm not uh, i didn't have the, uh, the time time tracking uh, but uh, just one one minute for conclusion uh basically and again getting back to more to the the theoretical uh, level of the of the open banking so uh, open banking is happening uh, open banking is uh, has been here with us for 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 many years it's growing over the globe uh, there are more and more subjects uh, who are opening up on the bank side. There are more and more subjects who are building uh, uh, apps or super apps or, or whatever solutions or, on the APIs. And I think this is, uh, you know, it's uh, the mix of the technology and the changing of customer, changing of the industry and, and the business models is, is uh, something uh, uh, which is basically saying, yes, this is a good direction uh, where to go. But the, the, the question is, you know, uh how the journey uh will look like and uh, how many years it will take once we really will create uh, some something dominant or new in the open banking area w w what i mean uh we've been talking serious about the open banking since 2016 17 in our bank and we have maybe i showed you three four use cases in total which are somehow promising and really have attraction uh, in uh, customer usage and generating revenues and generating value but i think uh, if you look at the banking uh, industry overall the open banking area uh, is just a small part of it if you measure it by the interaction by the value created by the by the revenues or by the money so i think there is a work uh, in front of us uh, you know coming with a new proposition really being good in the in the defining the problem and defining the solution how to how to solve the problem and hopefully in five, four, seven, eight, ten, fifty, I don't know, years, uh, really uh, making fundamental changes, how the business models in the banking look like and, uh, and uh, generating the value for the stakeholders, for the bank, for the customers, for the society. Okay, so that's all from my side.
and uh, I believe I'm ready uh, for some questions. Yes, yes, Martin. Uh, we have two questions actually. Uh, from the three strategies you present, for you, what's the most uh, uh, promising? You know, like. Uh, Okay, I'm not. If you are referring to the the three strategies like PSD to open banking or ecosystem or or, yes. or the one in the yes. theoretical, but okay, well, for me, uh, every of these three has a has a has a value and reason why we are doing it. But uh, where I'm focusing most of the energy is the is the open banking area, really uh, not being limited by PSD two legislation. Uh, be free, or let's say free, in uh, what APIs we want to expose and for what use cases and for who, and really creating a value uh, on, on top of it. You know, in PSD2, we are kind of limited by the regulation. In the ecosystem building, uh, we are not totally in control of what, what is going to happen. So open banking, this is uh, where, where I put our focus and uh, which is most promising for me. Yeah, we have a question from Peter. Uh, do you see PIS an account-to-account -account transfer taking off in the future? Or do you think it will be card-based? Well, I described you the, the hassle, so the, the problems and issues we, we have with the PIS. Uh, I don't know the detail of how PIS API quality is market by market all over the Europe or, or over the globe, you know. Uh, but uh, unless the APIs provide really seamless uh, quality for the client or the authentication and authorization, then basically this uh, this is doomed. You know, uh, here the benchmark is Apple Pay. Here the benchmark is card. Uh, you know, I don't like card so much, but it's still a benchmark for majority of the clients. Unless the PIS from the seamless and customer uh, or user experience point of view. Uh, uh, is not similar to Apple Pay or uh, or credit card uh, or payment card, then uh, there is uh, there is no future for the PIS from my point of view. Yeah, thank you very much, Martin. And we reach uh, the 25 minutes uh, limit here. Uh, thank you very much for being there. If you want to reach Martin or know more about Martin, you can uh, reach him on LinkedIn or chat with him on the platform uh, where actually you can chat with anyone. Uh, that you've seen uh, today. Thank you very much, Martin. We will be thank back. Thank you. In it was a pleasure. Take care. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. We will be back. In